Okay guys, uh, today's video is going to be uh, for a friend of mine who's been texting me a little bit and uh, just somebody I met on YouTube. Uh, his name's John. He's got a truck and he's got an AC problem and he wanted to know how to find out if his system was low on AC. Uh, there's two methods to figure out if you're low on AC. Uh, the first method is it, uh, it will detect if the system is actually charged but it could be low on AC. The next method is to find out if your system is so low that the compressor won't even engage. Uh, the first thing to check is to find out if you have any fluid in the system at all and uh, if that level is sufficient to actually engage your uh, compressor. So I'm going to show you how to engage the compressor without the engine even running. First thing you got to do is go ahead and obviously open up the hood and then go ahead and get in the truck and put your key in the ignition. So let's get in here. Let me get into the truck. All right, now once you're in the truck, go ahead and turn your AC system to off and then put your key to run, but don't actually start the truck. Here, close the door so you don't have to listen to that. There we go. Now, while you're in your truck with the engine not running, go ahead and put it over to AC. And if you hear a click in the engine, then your compressor is probably running just fine. Let me turn this pressure down. I don't think you can hear it in here, but I hear a clunk in the engine bay from the off position or not the off, but from the vent here to there. So it's actually engaging. You can also go ahead and start the truck and go out and see if the compressor is even running. Uh, let me uh, leave it off and I'll show you that position. So let's start it up. Let me go out in the engine bay. All right, notice that that is not turning right there, where that little silver thing is right there. Go get your finger in the belt, though. When I turn the AC system on, if there's enough fluid in the system, that will actually be turning. So let's go ahead and go turn the AC system on in the truck. All right, let's turn the AC system to on. Max right there, and go out and see if that compressor is turning. There you go. See that's turning? And stop. Now that's because it's cycling. There, so you kick back on. That tells me that the system in my truck is working. So now you can go ahead and turn the AC system back off if you're not going to use it. And let's get back out here and I'll show you another method. Alright, so if your compressor is actually engaging, then you actually have enough pressure in your system that you should be feeling something. If you're not feeling it as cold as you would like, then you're going to have to go ahead and get uh, a can with a little pressure gauge on it. They're about $28. And go ahead and hook it up to the low side right over here. And I'll put a little video. You have to pull this cap off, off right here. And then you go ahead and you hook up that little gauge there along with the can and you can turn the engine on and charge it now that's if the compressor is actually turning on and running so if if the compressor never turns on and never runs then you're gonna that means you don't have enough fluid in the system to actually turn that on and if there's enough pressure or fluid in the system it won't turn on so then you have to do what's called a bypass and the bypass is down here. Now when you first charge up a system, after you rebuilt it and you pull the vacuum on it and everything, uh, every, every technician will pretty much have to do this anyways. And what that is, is you actually force the compressor to come on to suck refrigerant down into the system. So this is what's called the cycle switch or what's commonly called the low pressure switch right here. And this is a switch that determines if there's enough refrigerant in the system to run it. The other switch is this one up here. This is called the high pressure switch. 
And this one determines if the system maybe has a blockage in it somewhere in the system and the compressor is just going to keep pumping and pumping and pumping. And, and without this switch, it would blow a hose or fry a, a, a compressor or pop a, the uh, a condenser, which is down in there where those two silver lines are hooked up. Or it could, it could blow, uh, blow any component in the system. So both switches are very important. But the one primarily that allows you to charge your system is this one down here. So what you have to do is you have to lift up on this little tab. Depending on where the tab is, it could be um, on the bottom. It could be on the side. Just pull the tab, I guess, away. You could say away from the center of the switch and pull it open like this. And once you've got it off, let me see if I can't zoom in on it for you. Once you've got it off, and let's see if I can focus on it too. There's two little pins in there. There's two little pins in there that actually have wires in them or connectors, connector pins. And then there's two that are empty. What you want to do is you want to take a paper clip and connect the two that are together. So let me let me do that real quick. Now first, uh, you have to bend it in this approximate shape here. It's better this way. And make sure it's got just a little bit of spring to it so that it'll spring out against the pins when you install it. So let me go ahead and install this for you since I don't have my tripod out here. There you go. Now once you get this installed in, in these two pins, if you're looking at the connector where the lock is on the top, it'll be the top right pin and the bottom left pin. And this should be pretty much for 1999 all the way up to 2004. And I believe it goes even further than that. But those are the years I know it works for. And it, like I said, it probably does work for other years too. Then what you would do is you would separate this out someplace where it's not going to fall over or give you any problems. Then what you do is you go ahead and start your engine up. And if that compressor comes on, then you know for sure that you had low fluid in your system. Then you can go ahead and, and hook up one of those, uh, you know, rinky dink uh, twenty-eight dollar R134 refrigerant kits with the little with the little blue gauge on it. And I'll put a picture of uh, that little item I'm talking about. And you can go ahead and turn your AC system on, and it'll probably take about uh, two to three cans total. If it's one of those big cans, it'll take one big can and one little can you can unscrew the can uh the big can once it's empty and then put in the little can and then your system should start working you should uh, get some coolant out out of the uh system now uh one of the things you have to be concerned about after you do that though is that when you you do have to pull this off and hook that back up as a safety precaution but the other thing is, is where did the Freon go or the R134A go to begin with? Uh, most systems do leak. I don't know any systems that don't leak. But uh, if it leaks enough to where if you put it in and it, and it keeps going out, you know, every year or something or within a couple of days or months, then you're going to have a seal problem. And then you got to go find the seal. And that gets into what's called leak detection. And that's a different video. But this is your basic video on how to tell if you're low on Freon or I keep calling it Freon, R134 refrigerant. The other way is you can uh, uh, press this down here and here. If I can get the screwdriver in there, there it is. And if it comes out forcefully like that, more than likely you have enough uh, fluid in it. Uh, but uh, if you do that and it's just like a barely little whiff, you know just barely something that's probably not not enough uh, in the system but this is uh how you can go ahead and and get your compressor to run so you can charge it if you don't do this trick and there's not enough uh fluid in the system to begin with and you hook that uh, can up to it and the compressor doesn't run uh then you have to do this right here so anyways, I hope this is enough. I just kind of did this on the fly. Uh, I'm not too thorough on it. I know that I probably made a mistake in here somewhere. If somebody uh, knows it, well, put it down in the comments so that others can read the comments. So that's just a quickie. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. God bless you all and Keith Nunn you out. Bye.